Hey there, Bronco Carl 92 here. So for today's video, I have a review for you on an Autel OBD2 scanner. So I was contacted by Autel about this uh, scanner in here. They sent it to me through Amazon. So let's get this cut open and see what we got. So it's an Autel AL539 OBD2 scanner. Okay, so next generation OBD2, an electrical test tool. So it looks like it's a scanner and uh, some sort of multimeter. So let's get this thing out of the box and uh, see what all comes with it. So we have our case here, looks like instructions. Updating disk context, update applications, DTC library, USB drivers, user manual, and Adobe Acrobat, Adobe Acrobat Reader. And this looks like some multimeter leads, USB cable, and an OBD cable. All right, let's get this plugged into a car and see what happens. Okay, so we have our 2002 Volkswagen Passat. Um, this car has been in a few of my videos before. Uh, we have a check engine light on. Uh, we had an exhaust leak that we repaired. Uh, likely the faults that are in the car are due to the exhaust leak. Uh, had a, a catalyst efficiency issue and lean running condition. So let's uh, get this thing plugged in and take a look. So OBD port is under here. So apparently it's not touch screen. Oh, excuse me, that's a starter test. Well, let's give that a try. Turn off all vehicle loads, make sure the ignition is on. Okay. 11.49 volts. Press OK to continue. Start engine. Okay, so it says charge battery, crank voltage 6.78 volts, the volt percentage 39%, crank time 26 milliseconds, press OK to retest. Alright, so let's shut it off. Press OK. Shut down engine. Start engine. Cranking normal. 7.29 volts, volts percent, 50 percent. Crank time 28 milliseconds. All right, so I guess we'll just hit escape. Get the air on in here. It's pretty hot out today. Okay, anyway, so let's uh, let's do our OBD test. Ok, 
Okay, it's made a link. Erase previously stored data to save data from this test. I don't know what that means, so I'm going to hit no. Okay, engine. Read codes. Stored codes. Okay, so post catalyst fuel trim. Bank. P2098. Like I said we knew that code was in there. And O2 sensor circuit slow response. Bank 2 sensor 2 P0159. So like I said, we had an exhaust leak. Um, there's flex couplings between the uh, first and second catalysts on these cars. And if you have an exhaust leak, basically it will suck air in and fool the oxygen sensors into thinking that the mixture is incorrect. So Anyway, that's cured now, so we can proceed with clearing these. Okay, so hit escape. Escape. Erase codes. TTCs and freeze data will be lost. Do you wish to continue? Yes. Also, the readiness codes are... Uh, going to be um, erased and the car will have to be driven a few times for the readiness codes to set before the car will be eligible for an emissions test. So let's see what else we can do here. So we have live data. So far I really like this thing. Okay, so view data. Complete data set. So, DTC counter zero, fuel system one and fuel system two are in closed loop. Uh, load percentage, coolant temperature sensor. Let's see if we click on this. We're graphing right now. This is our load percentage. And as I step on the throttle, you can see that the load changes. The graphs. It's really nice. sensor that we had the issue with before and as you can see it's swinging I hope you can see this anyway okay there you go maybe you can see that a little bit better so it's swinging basically between uh, 0.48 and 0.41 volts throttle here we might get a little more of a swing. This little car's torquey. Okay, that's the post-cat sensor that we were looking at. Here's the pre-cat sensor. This has a much larger swing. So we go from 0.8, excuse me, 0.08 to 0.8. That's pretty cool. All right, what else can we do here? We can do a custom data set. Select, select. 
Oh wow, so we can actually select a few things. So why don't we select load. Okay. And coolant temperature. And RPM. How about our O2 sensor one and O2 sensor two and hit OK. And now we can have some particularly uh, values, some particular values for for diagnostics. So if we wanted to. take a ride, we can actually see how the O2 sensors react under a driving situation. So. We have a record function. We can record the complete data set. So there's a manual trigger and a di uh, DTC trigger. So if you're driving and the code returns, that should trigger it, and you can look at the live data and see where your problem is. Really nice. All right. So, what else do we have here? So we have the uh, emissions monitor readiness codes. So mills off, misfires okay, fuel trims okay, CCM okay, cat incomplete, HCAT not available or not applicable, EVAP incomplete, air system incomplete, O2 sensor incomplete, O2 heater incomplete, and EGR is not, not applicable. So I suppose after this car is driven a couple times our readiness codes will set and then this green checkbox should probably illuminate. I'm assuming that's why we're, uh, we're yellow right now. Cool. Vehicle information. Turn key on with engine off. Wait. So we have our calibration ID. And then our cal verification number, which is not supported on this old vehicle. I know in a lot of the newer vehicles, those two numbers need to be the same if you want to verify if there's uh, any sort of uh, performance or manipulated uh, software installed in the engine control module. Okay. Component test, what's that? Evac leak test. Command sent. We also have a menu for the automatic transmission. Let's see what kind of live data we can see in the automatic transmission. Let's start this baby up. Okay. View data, complete data set. So we don't really have that much uh, in this car. Just the engine coolant temperature sensor. Looks like engine RPM, vehicle speed kilometers and uh, throttle angle. It'd be interesting to see what this does on a uh, more modern vehicle. Anyway, this is a really nice tool. The Autolink AL539 by Autel. This is 
checking the readiness, which we did already, but kind of wondering how the multimeter works on this thing. It has an internal battery or something. I guess we'll have to try that next. Okay, so we have a real nice display here of what's ready and what's not. And you can see with the green checks what's okay. And with the red X is obviously what isn't. And then obviously the not, a, not applicable one. So anyway, this is nice. Have I mentioned this is a nice tool? data available. Oh, multimeter. Okay, we can change the language, we can configure monitors, unit of measure, key beep set, status beep set, tool, self-test, tool information, update mode, calibration mode. I guess we can update this if, it, if we need to. Probably go online for that. All right, well, let's take this back inside and see if we can do something with the multimeter. Okay, so if you uh, unplug the OBD plug, the multimeter function will work. Apparently this has an internal battery. So right now it's, uh, it's set to auto. Uh, it looks like voltage. So let's check. I don't have any sensors or anything that are defective right now. So let's see here if we... So my 18 volt battery actually shows... 20 volts. Or if I have some sort of sensor. I'll be back in a second. All right, I don't have a sensor, but I have this window switch here from the Dodge. So we can check if this switch works. Oh, you can actually use this as a min max function on frequency, duty cycle. Ohms. It looks like a diode check, and of course this would be an amperage setting that you'd use with the positive lead in here. You'd measure amps and milliamps. Let's see here. And we're back up at the top, so let's try resistance or continuity. So this would be common. This is going to be interesting to... So that's closed. That's closed. Okay, so I'm going to assume that if we activate the switch kind of difficult to do without alligator clips. Okay, so that breaks the circuit when we move the switch to the one position. And that's the opposite. Okay, very good. All right, so that seems to be one of the better tools that I got sent to me for review. This is the Autolink by Autel AL539. Uh, you can pick it up on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. Please comment, subscribe, and uh, hopefully we'll see you again soon. Take care.